Okay, good evening. Welcome here. Yeah, from now on, the classes will be in this venue and not in uh, S216. We were busy with the uh, worked example 6. With worked example 6 is also a DC motor drive but with a three phase. And uh, although I said they separately excited DC motor there, I haven't got the um, in the sketch, I haven't got the supply to the stator wind windings. I'm only showing you the armature circuit. That is in figure 11.229. Now the supply transformer has a phase voltage of 127 volts, 50 hertz. The motor parameters are the inductance is 12 millihenries, the resistance is 0,5. 72 ohm the armature constant is 2 volts per radians per second and the torque constant is 2 newton meters per amp page 269 determine the torque at 30 degrees if the back emf is 280 volts so the delay angle is implied there Determine the torque at 30 degrees if the back EMF is... In your bridge, the 127 volts, 50 hertz, that 127 volts is an RMS value. And you have a commutating diode and resist and uh, motor equivalent circuit is the same as with a single phase. Oh, and sketch the basic outline of the voltages in the circuit ignoring the motor back EMF. Figure 11.31 you'll see that our three thyristors, they will only fire after 30 degrees. So there's our 30 degrees. And when we look at that which will appear over the motor on the positive side, is that after 30 degrees, we will follow this line here. When we reach this point here, a diode would have switched on, but there's no diode in the circuit there. There is a thyristor. So we delay with another 30 degrees and then we go to th that phase. When we reach this point here, a the next diode would have switched on, but now we have a thyristor, so we will delay with another 30 degrees as indicated here. And so there we have the voltage that will be appearing on the positive side on the motor. On the negative side we've got three diodes. So if we reach this point here this diode will switch on and that phase will be supplied to the bottom part of the motor. When we get to that point there the next diode is forward biased and we will be following this line here and the same there and there. However, the voltage that we see over the motor will be the difference between these two. Now you should, you, sh you have done this uh, previously in Power Electronics 3, but I know that's many, many moons ago. So I'm going to show you how we go about it. This point here is Vmax, do you agree? This point here is 0 0.5 Vmax. That point there is minus 0 0.5 Vmax. This is 0 and there is minus Vmax. And then we will have a line here about there 
which will be 0 0.866 Vmax. And we have that same line here. And that line gives us minus 0 0.866 Vmax. Now my motor, just to bring it to you, there is the positive side of the, on the motor. There is the motor itself. So that voltage is appearing here, and this voltage is appearing here. If we want that which is being supplied to the motor, we have to subtract this negative one from the positive one. So let's do it. Starting from there, Vmax minus, minus 0 0.5 Vmax gives us 1.5 Vmax. Now this here is 1.5 Vmax. This one here is 1.732 Vmax. This line here is 0 0.866 Vmax. And that one there represents 0. Now let's see if we can get to all those values there. Vmax minus, minus 0 0.5 Vmax gives us 1.5 Vmax. Are you happy with that one? Hmm? And then, next one. Remember, we were now busy with this phase here, eh? And that phase there. Or which one do you want to take? Let's take this one here and that one there for starters. So when we get to this point here, it is 0 0.866 Vmax minus, minus 0 0.866 Vmax, which will give us 1.732 Vmax. There we've got 0 0.5 Vmax minus, minus Vmax will give us 1.5 Vmax. So do you see that we are now getting this line here? Okay, maybe I should go one step further. 0 minus minus 0 0.866 Vmax gives us 0 0.866 Vmax. Go to this point here. Minus 0 0.5 Vmax minus minus 0 0.5 Vmax is 0. So here we now have that line there. Do you agree? I see some puzzles on the faces. Yes. Okay, then I. If I said that, I can't. I I can't remember exactly what I said, but we must subtract the negative from the positive. That which is on this side here. Let's let's call it maybe not negative. Let's call it. V negative, and let's call it here V positive, okay? So if I want that voltage there, that V motor there, then I must have V plus minus V negative. Did I, did I say the other way around? Okay. Okay, we must subtract this one from that one. So... Here we now have a um, a phase voltage which has been rectified. Now, if I go and I look at with respect to uh, between this same phase and this phase here, what will I get? If I I want to now see which which of these voltages will I get? So there is Vmax minus minus 0 0.5 Vmax gives me that point there. If I go 30 degrees further, then I've got 0 0.866. Uh, let me just say, let me take another color so that I can just uh, uh, not get confused. 
Because if I get confused, then you must be very confused on that side. Okay, so what we're now going to do is we're going to compare um, this one here. And we're going to compare it. We're going to uh, look at this phase here. Uh, I've already done. I've done this one here. Okay, so now I'm going to look at that one there. So green minus blue. V max minus minus 0 comma 5 gives me 1 comma 5. 0 comma 866 V max minus 0 gives me 0 comma 866 V max. And then um, 0. Now where am I now? I'm there, now I'm there, okay. Now I'm there. 0, 0,5 Vmax minus 0, 0,5 Vmax gives me 0. So at this stage now, we are busy with that part of the phase there. So can you see where these voltages come from? They come from the fact that we've got two phases that are interacting with the three-phase bridge and on the other side, we're going to have a, li a line voltage. We're not going to have a phase voltage anymore. But what we are really interested in is how does the voltage look over the motor with this delay angle. So now I'm going to take this line here that we've made there, and I'm going to subtract this line from it. So let's start. I started at this point here. So here I have 0 minus, minus 0 0.866. That gives me 0 0.866. Everywhere that I have a vertical line, I must take both values and subtract the other one from it. So here I now have 0 0.866. Minus minus 0, 0.866 gives me 1,732. Vmax minus minus 0, 0.5 Vmax gives me 1,5 Vmax. 0, 0.866 Vmax minus minus 0, 0.866 Vmax gives me 1,732 Vmax. 0, 0.5 Vmax. Minus, minus Vmax gives me 1,5 Vmax. Zero minus, minus 0, 0.866 Vmax gives me um, gives me 0, 0.866 Vmax. Remember now, I said we're going to ignore E now. I'm just first just looking at what wave shape will I get. Then, the next one here, now I've got a vertical change. So it is 0, 0.866 Vmax minus, minus 0, 0.866 Vmax gives me 1,732. And there I now have the shape that I will have without the back EMF introduced. Now how will we find out when is the back EMF introduced? We will find out if the thyristors are switched off and the commutating diode is not conducting. Remember S1 and S2 both open gives us E. So here I am now going to, in blue, going to show you what we see if we do not have if we do not look at when is the um, sorry this one mustn't go down there it must go can I fill it in in this direction it will be like that there, do you agree? And then, up there, down here, up there. This blue line here 
is what is being supplied towards the motor. Now when you look at this blue line and, you, and we assume that the current is going to start off at zero, then we can go using that phase there, that voltage there, we can go and use that uh, um, phase uh, line voltage there to get an equation for the current that is going to flow during this phase here. But the moment I reach this point here, then the supply voltage changes. When the supply voltage changes, the current through the motor is going to change and the equation is going to change. With a single phase, I told you that the current that flows through the inductor before a change is equal to the current that flows through the inductor after the change. So in this case, our current is going to end at a value here. And that value has now have to be taken into account when we get an equation for this current I2. And the current I2 is going to flow from here onwards. But we don't know up to where yet. We have to find out where does it go through zero. And the moment that it goes through zero, we know that the commutating diode has switched off. And if the commutating diode switches off, ah, sorry, not off. The thyristor switches off, there's no energy left in it to switch on the commutating diode. So the commutating diode is not going to conduct. The thyristor is off. That which appears over the motor until we fire a thyristor again is the back EMFE. And that's why you can see for this section here, if I take another color here, for this section here, I will have the back EMF appearing there. Now in order to determine the average voltage over the motor, we have to determine the shaded area here. The area underneath the graph here. Divided by this period here will give us an average value. And from that average value, we can get the average or the mean current flowing through the motor. And from there, we can determine the torque. So that is the sequence that we have to go through. Now, that first waveform that I showed you is figure 1130 in the book. Now, we need limits here. Now, if you look at the limits that we ha I have put in here, um, if we look at this one here, pi over 2. Pi over 2 is with respect to, is this point here on the phase that starts here, there's 0 and there's pi. Do you agree with that? The 2 pi over 3 is that limit there. So this will be the two limits during which we will have that line voltage applied to the motor. Then things are going to change because we are now going to go over to this phase here. And this phase here, 
starts here. There's its zero. And there's its pi. So which point is that one there? It is pi over 3. Because here's 0, then it's pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2. Next one. 2 pi over 3. This one. Five pi over six. Hmm? It's very quiet in this class at this moment. So when we go to page two, yes. Okay. Every line here is 30 degrees, the distance there. Okay. So, and... Um, 30 degrees is in radians pi over 6. So if I start off here, it and I'm going to do this one in red now, it's going to be 0, pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, and then 6 pi over 6, which gives us pi. Okay, and I don't understand what you're saying now. Okay, here is the line that I'm uh, the the line voltage that I'm looking at now. There it is. Okay, if I look at that one, it will start off at zero. Go positive until pi, and then it will go negative after that. But now I've got a bridge rectifier. So instead of going negative, it now goes up again. Okay. Just like with the single phase, we had that. Yeah, yeah. Then, then I would say, okay, this is now my zero, then pi over 6. Yeah, yeah. But now when I go in on the... Um, line voltages, there is a, a phase shift. You see, my, my, the green one, it's zero, is now here at the other one's pi over three. Okay. But it will now have this shape here. But mathematically, when I look at everything, I will have an equation for... V max sin omega t, and my t, every time there's a change, I will say this t is now zero, okay, in the end. I will go and put in my alpha, and I'll go and put in the time at which this voltage is starting, etc. Okay, that's why these limits were so important. That pi over 3 was important there. So on page 271, on page 271, we have our I1 is equal to IDC plus I AC plus I impulse. And that is the first thing that you recognize from the previous classes. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So can you determine IDC? Yes, IDC is the same as before. It is minus E over R. And in this case, it's minus 280 divided by 0, 0,72. Now, as you can see, suddenly the resistance part in the motor is much, much lower than we had before. So the answers here are much greater. So minus 389 amps. IAC, now this is the one that we will now have to see that you can get to it. It is um, Vmax Sin Omega T plus alpha plus pi over 3 divided by Z angle phi. Now I want you to go and see if you can get to that V max sin omega T plus alpha plus pi over 3. I think we should maybe make this Vmax here, which is the maximum voltage in the um, circuit. Do you think that that Vmax is correct there, or would you rather have V line max? Uh, it is the maximum voltage, but if you just look at the next line when I fill in for Vmax, I say it's 127 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. Now the moment I go 127 times square root of 2, I'm at Vmax. If I a then say square root 3, multiply with that, then I'm at V line max. So rather let's say V line max.